Welcome to Mr. Brown's Basement, a channel devoted to sharing the craft of repairing, restoring, and modifying vintage electronic gear, and other random stuff. This video is about how I finished off one of my attic rooms. You might think, this is Mr. Brown's basement. Well, it is, sort of. This video falls into the other random stuff category. You might also be wondering how I can call this an attic. Technically, it's not an attic space, it's a garret, but we've always called it the attic. A garret is a habitable attic, living space at the top of a house or a larger residential building, traditionally small, dismal, and cramped, with sloping ceilings. By this definition, it ticks off all the boxes. It's small, dismal, and cramped with sloped ceilings. The slope ceilings are the finished underside of the roof. My house has four rooms in the attic, and this is the last one to be finished off. I was saving this one to the end because of how small and how odd a shape it is. For the longest time, I didn't know what to do with it, so I stayed away and kept it as a place to store old stuff that I really didn't want to deal with. It worked very well for that, but just recently I came up with some ideas which I thought would be appropriate for an early Victorian house, also attractive and useful to me. To fully understand the project, you need to get a sense of the context. Here's the floor plan of the entire attic. The outline of this floor plan represents the outer wall of the house. Each square on the graph paper is equal to one square foot. The cross-hatched area represents the roof, which means that the ceiling slopes down sharply, so you probably can't stand comfortably under it. This video is about the attic west room. The floor space is about 9 feet by 9 feet, but you only have about 7 feet of headroom in a space about 9 feet by 5 feet. The far, or west wall, which I had literally not seen in decades, is shaped like a barn and a regular hexagon. Finally, as is typical in houses of this vintage, no two walls are symmetrical, straight, plumb, or true. The first task was to empty out the room. This involved deciding what to keep what to give away to the Salvation Army and to the Habitat for Humanity store, and what to gift to the municipal waste. Let's just say that all parties received their fair share. Once the room is empty, my plan was to frame the ceiling, attach drywall underneath as a lower ceiling, install cove lighting with LED tape so that it shines up on the upper ceiling, and add a faux tin ceiling, ceiling treatment, to give it a more sophisticated look. First step will be to get everything out of here and then start measuring to put up the framing, which in this case is 2x4 ripped to 2.5 inches. Well, I got most of the stuff out and it's looking a little bit better. Now, in this corner here, next to the chimney chase, I'm planning on putting a bookcase, custom bookcase, but that's not going to happen until this project is finished. Odd shape. I wouldn't want to have to cut it myself. The 2x4 will be held to the ceiling with this adhesive and then also these screws. So 2.5 inches for the 2x4, which has been ripped to 2.5 plus half inch for the drywall means it will be going into the, uh, the joists about an inch. But I'll use lots of screws so it won't go anywhere. Besides, it's not going to be holding very much drywall anyway. I think I'm going to measure this end and center uh, where the frame is going to go between the two corners where the ceiling hits the roof and do the same over here. That end near the window is a 36 and a half. This other end is 36 and an eighth. So it's not going to be a perfect rectangle, but it's going to be very, very close. I can hide the difference with the drywall. It's a good idea to find the joists before you need them. Found a joist. I might use one of the ceiling joists, and if there is one in the wall handy, which there probably is, 
I'll use that one too. Yeah, that's even better. There's nothing handy nearby to tie this to, so I'll tie it later once the glue is set. But as you can see, things aren't quite straight. And I'm going to have to do some shimming because that's like half an inch out right there. I finished the framing now. I found a few interesting things. Like the fact that the ceiling isn't completely um, the same width, which is a bit of a problem. The next thing I should deal with is that. Now, I don't want a, a wire running along the surface, even painted or concealed. I'd rather run it inside the ceiling, so I want to put a box over there. Now, this hex box has three, five, seven, seven 14 gauge conductors and four caps, so it's full. I can't put anything more in there, and I need another two conductors, so it's going to have to be a bigger box. To get power where I'm going to want it, I've cut a hole with a box cutter, and then I'm going to insert a retrofit box into the ceiling, like that. Just don't forget to leave yourself a little bit of space Please focus, thank you. A little bit of space for the wall plate. Otherwise, if you move it too close, then you won't be able to put a wall plate in and that's not a good thing. There you have it, a new junction box and new receptacle. And it even works. The whole reason for this is because with these um, LED strips, the power supply is a plug-in adapter like this, and it's got to go somewhere. Now there's another option, and that's to use a driver, which is basically a power supply in a, in a nice little metal box. But they were going to charge a ridiculous sum for that, so rather than spend more on the driver than for the lights, I went with the default option and installed an outlet. Some of the light from the, the uh, LED strips will reflect off the wood, so it was necessary to prime it and later on I'll paint it white. There's the junction box and it has to remain accessible according to the electrical code, so I'm going to make uh, an access panel and it will still be possible to get to it but hopefully it won't look too ugly. Now I have the decorative panels up on the ceiling. They're a little awkward to get up. They're held up with uh, adhesive but they are a little floppy while they're being put up. Those are the four screws that hold up the uh, access panel over the junction box. And I'm adding more Framing at the edges, I don't have it on this side yet, but it will make it easier to do the drywall. Here's a close-up of the ceiling treatment. It's really quite spectacular. I started putting up the drywall, and to my disappointment, I can actually see all the way into the cove, which didn't have any ceiling treatment. So what I have to do now is go back and put in additional ceiling treatment so that you don't see just plain boring ceiling. Not a big deal, but it means I'll have to order more ceiling treatment. I finally finished getting the drywall up. Come on, focus, thank you. And uh, nothing is even or flat or square. Anyway, um, I didn't really like the proportions, so I lengthened the ends a little bit, and I much prefer it now. The ceiling is now drywalled and filled, at least filled to the best of my ability. I had a lot of respect for drywallers before, even more now. I'm going to do some sanding and priming and then install the strip lights. And hopefully all will go well.
There is one small problem though, and that is I want more ceiling tile or ceiling treatment, and there isn't any anywhere. Amazon is out, Home Depot, Rona, Home Hardware, they're all out, even Wayfair. So I'm going to have to wait until it comes in before completing this project. A big improvement from the way it was before. Now my drywalling isn't quite perfect, it really isn't, but that's not among my superpowers anyway. Most of the drywall is going to get covered with the ceiling treatment, so it really won't matter. All that matters is the edges, and they're okay. So now we're just waiting for more ceiling treatment. I've got the J-channel up. That makes it look more smooth and clean. But I've realized that before I start applying the ceiling treatment to this drywall, I should probably deal with the walls. But I can't deal with the walls until I think about the wallpaper. So that's next. Here's the wallpaper I'm planning on using. It's uh, vertical stripes with a really nice texture. And I'm going to use it on the wall over here and the wall over here. But I'm only going to go up about maybe halfway on the side walls because they're of different height. I'll put the uh, kind of wallpaper in the description. You can't really see. It's actually a richer color than this, more saturated. I've got the trim and the uh, walls painted twice. Just have to do some touching up. Uh, woodwork is all done. Left a space for the uh, bookcase. And uh, next step is wallpaper. I can't wait. It's taken me a day, but I've got all the wallpaper in. First time putting up wallpaper. Not perfect, but not bad. No seams. That's where the bookcase is going to go. Can't do the chair rails until uh, the bookcase is in. The next step is to finish off the ceiling and to wait for the bookcase. And the floor. I finally got the rest of the ceiling treatment up. Here's a secret for you. Nothing is square and nothing is straight, but it looks like it is, which is good for me. The next is J-trim around the middle, if I can do that, and uh, some wooden trim before the bookcase goes in. It's probably not going to be done for another couple of weeks. I couldn't find a chair rail that I wanted to use, so I got an embossed wooden molding instead. To make it more interesting, I painted it in the woodwork color and then in gold and did a very light top coat in the woodwork color. The idea was to get the gold to fill the hollows and be surrounded by the woodwork color. It took time to get it just right. It's been a couple of weeks since my last entry. The wallpaper along with chair rail is in, though it's not actually chair rail, it's decorative molding. And I've got some blinds, blinded by the blinds in fact. And just waiting for the shelving unit. And after the shelving unit, of course, is the floor and a few pieces of trim here and there. And maybe additional lighting. I haven't decided if another row of LEDs would be good. I think it would be. So uh, I guess the next video will be once the uh, shelving unit is in. Which should be this week. But we'll see. The shelf was put in today. It's not quite finished yet. We still need to get a riser down at the bottom to reduce the gap at the top and level it, of course, and put a trim in around the edges to give it a finished look and make it flush with the wall. But uh, it's looking good. There you have it. The shelves 
have been fully installed and the trim has been attached. I put some binders in place just to make sure they fit, which they do. And still there's plenty of things to be done, but I think I'm going to save that for the second video, the floor and the furnishings. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel for more interesting and unusual content.